So, I have a question. What do you guys think the hardest Linux distro is? And would you use it? So, let's first, before we dive into my opinion on this, talk about what I mean by distro and what I mean by hard. So, we have to define some terms. First off, I'm discounting some distros, if you want to call them distros. I'm not going to talk about Linux from scratch because that would win. <laughs> like, like the video would not need to exist if we included Linux from scratch. We know that that's hard. It's almost impossible for most people to install. So we're not going to include it. So just we'll scratch off Linux from scratch. We're also going to scratch off a lot of the less traditional distros, things like Nix, OS, and Geeks, and things like that. So we're just not going to talk about those. Uh, just just because I don't think that they really qualify to be on the list in, in terms of traditional Linux distros. So uh, we all know my opinion on a lot of those things. We don't really need to get into those, but that's the reason why they're not on the list. So we're going to discount some of those things. So we need to then talk about what we mean by hard. And this can we can come at this from a couple different angles uh, in terms of installation and in terms of maintenance. And some of these are hard on both ends. And some of the one of the ones I'm going to talk about is hard more on the maintenance side than on the install side. So we're going to talk about the ones that I think are the hardest Linux distros for regular people. And that's another thing that I should talk about. When I'm talking about hard, I'm talking about for people who know a little bit of Linux but aren't the Linux nerds amongst you. This hat has come into all you know it has been very useful for our, as a prop way more than i thought it was going to be anyways you want that shop that's going to cast that work <laughs> anyways the point i'm trying to make here is that when i'm talking about hard what i mean is for regular normal linux users now i know that the term normal has become pejorative and i i know that some people think that there's no such thing as a normal Linux user and whatever. And people also think that, you know, when I'm talking about normal users, I'm talking about Windows users. I'm not talking about Windows users. I'm talking about people who know a little bit about Linux but aren't super nerds. Who, some people who would try Linux from scratch is what I'm try, trying to say. So it's kind of a rough needle to thread here, but we'll just kind of go with it and and see where we end up. So the first one I think that has to be on this list is Gentoo. Gentoo is harder to install and hard to maintain, and it doesn't really function like any other distro while still having most of the stuff that all distros have. And that's the reason why I think that it's probably the hardest distro on this list, like beyond anything else. So in order to install it, you have to follow a long guide. There's no installer whatsoever. You just download a tarball and follow a whole bunch of directions. And it's all terminal based. You have to usually do this inside of another live ISO of another distro. I mean, you could do it in something else like an Arch ISO or whatever, but you know, you're know, probably gonna want a browser of some kind in order to look at the, the handbook. So. The way you do this is a little unusual, and getting through it is difficult for multiple reasons. One, the handbook, while is really good, it's also very technical. But also, chances are, if you're installing Gentoo, and if you're like me, you have friends who are Gentoo users, none of those Gentoo users, who are probably also your friends, have installed Gentoo the same way as each other. They've all done it slightly differently, and they're all very helpful. They're all very, very helpful, and that's great. The problem is, of course, that because they've all done it differently and they're all trying to help you at the same time, you're going to end up with a broken mess at the end of it if you try to follow their instructions and not the handbook. So the installation of Gen 2 is what I would call the hardest outside of, like I said, Linux from scratch, and definitely the hardest that I'm going to include on this list in terms of installation. I'm also going to say that the maintenance of Gen 2 is also pretty hard because you have to do things like manage use flags. You have to do things like learn how to use portage and how to unmask things when you're installing stuff and all sorts of things that just don't really play a role in any other distribution. So I would say Gen 2 is by far the hardest distro that we're going to talk about today. It's weird that I put it up front, but I just wanted to put it there. So Gen 2 is definitely, I think, the hardest one. And that leads me into the next one, which is Slackware. Now, Slackware, people are like, 
does that still exist? Like, is Slackware still a thing? It is still a thing. You can still go download Slackware. It is still being updated and maintained. Is it like a fast moving distribution? No, it's not. Not at all. Uh, it makes Debian look like a, uh, it makes Debian look like Arch is, is really what you need to think about it. Of. So it is a very slow moving distribution. I think it's maintained by just one or two people at this point, but it's still maintained and people still do use it. It's also kind of hard. Now, I've only tried to install it one time. I think I succeeded, but I don't really remember all that much about it. But I will say that what I do remember is that package maintenance and package management on it is very different than what you're used to. And that can be both good and bad. It can lead to a lot of learning experiences, but it can also, because you might be more familiar with a more traditional package manager, kind of lead you astray. Now, I can't tell you much about the installation anymore. I don't really remember much about it other than the fact that it wasn't as simple as popping into calamaris and installing something. So I'm going to put Slackware as the second most difficult on this list, even though it's not as used as Gen 2 is. So just kind of keep that in mind. I will just say that I'm happy that it still exists. It's really nice to have one of the granddaddies of Linux still around. It was one of the very first distros, and the fact that it's still being somewhat maintained, I think is really good. And it can kind of be up there with Debian as like the, those are like the two distros along with SUSE that kind of like started this whole grand experiment. So I think that that's great. The next one on the list, I'm going to put on the list, even though I, I am going to get some flack on it. And that's Arch Linux. Now, Arch Linux used to be hard to install, similar to Gen 2 in some ways. Although I don't think it was ever quite as hard as Gen 2 to install. But these days, it's not hard to install at all. Arch install exists. It's really, really easy to just pop into that script, fill out what you need to fill out, press the enter button, and it will just install Arch Linux for you. It'll even get you to the point where you have a display manager and a desktop environment of some kind or a window manager, and you'll be just happy to go. The reason why I'm putting it on the list is because Arch is actually pretty hard to maintain. Now, if you talk to Arch Linux fanboys, of which there are many, They'll tell you that Arch has been very stable of late. I don't believe them, to be honest with you, but they'll tell you that. All of my Arch friends have been telling me for months that Arch hasn't broken in ages. And, okay, fine. But, I will say that Arch, because of its rolling release nature, can be hard to maintain. And that means that things are going to break for you as things go, go along. So, the difficulty here isn't in the installation. It's purely in the maintenance of it. Making sure that you pay attention to the changes that are coming through the pipeline to ensure that when you do an update, things don't break. Or if you do an update and it does break, you then go figure out how to roll that stuff back. It is the primary example of a rolling release distro for good reason because it does rolling the it, it does like super rolling things are very very early on arch they're kind of like the guinea pigs of the linux community community they're going to get stuff way earlier than basically everybody else so that means that you are going to have problems things that shouldn't have been pushed out so soon so that's going to happen even though the arch linux guys are going to tell you that it's getting more rare i will still say that the maintenance of arch linux makes it qualified for being on this list even though the installation nowadays isn't hard at all i'm gonna put this last one on here as kind of an honorable mention and that's open SUSE. now open SUSE i think is actually a fairly easy distro to get into but one of the reasons why i think it does deserve to be on this list is because yast exists and yast is like a candy store for nerds and i think that that's awesome but if a non-nerd goes into the store and tries to do something they can cause some serious damage and there's nothing preventing them from doing so once they give the pseudo password which you have to do to launch yast you can go in and do basically anything you want you could completely ruin your network stack you could completely ruin all of your packages you could delete all of the repositories that you get your packages from so you never get updates again you could do so much stuff in yast because it's a front end for everything linux and if you go in there and you don't know what you're doing because and you find that it's not well documented because it's not there are so like little blurbs saying what each thing is but that's usually it 
you could get in there and cause some serious problems again if you don't know what you're doing. So I put OpenSUSE on the list because Yast exists. Granted, I don't know how many people actually use Yast, but I still think that it deserves to a spot on the list, even if it's more of an honorable mention. So those are the four that I would put on the list. Now, I'm sure that there are some out there that I'm forgetting or that I've just never tried. So if there are other distros you consider the hardest Linux distro, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Maybe I will try one of those hardest distros and put it on the next list that I make. So comments are appreciated. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate that as well. You, you like Linux content because you probably came across this video and I make Linux content. So it's kind of like a match made in heaven. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it. If you want to follow me, you can do so on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll find weekly exclusive podcasts where it's basically just me for 15 minutes sitting down and talking about stuff. And if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, you can head on over there and support me. All tiers get access to that. You can also support me on YouTube and also get access to it. So there you go. You can also head on over to the store where you can find the Linux nerd hat or the I love Vim hat right back there, along with all sorts of other merch that's available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. All the proceeds for the merch goes directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Again, just you're all awesome. And if you are just interested in doing so, give yourself a pat on the back and pretend it's from me. So uh, I hope that wasn't too creepy. Anyway, anyways, thank you so very much for your support. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.